ye of little faith. You guys didn't expect to see another video from me so soon, did you? Well, apparently picks fly because we're back with part three of our replication series. And today we're going to be learning about network relevancy. So let's dive right in. What is network relevancy? Network relevancy is what determines whether the server will replicate information to a specific client or not. Why do we need it? Let's say you open up YouTube and search for whatever video. Now imagine as soon as you hit search, YouTube not only showed you all of the available videos, but it started to buffer all of the videos on your screen. Even though you may not watch any of them, YouTube has kindly eaten up all your bandwidth because it assumed that every single video it showed you was relevant to what you wanted to watch. That would be very inefficient and would really suck. Likewise, with multiplayer games, if you have 50,000 actors in your map and your player is not going to interact with 40,000 of those actors, there's no reason for the server to send information about those actors to that player. There lies the beauty of network relevancy. The server will only replicate an actor to a client if the actor is relevant to that client. To all my one persons out there, we're going to start off with one of these just for you. Okay, so I've rearranged the settings under the replication section, and I've arranged them in a way that the engine determines an actor's relevancy. And I've also stripped out some other irrelevant settings so that we can focus on the ones that are relevant to this video. If you hit that like button right now, I know you're looking me dead in the eye and saying, I see what you did there. And yes, you're right, I did. Today we've got greeny, reddy, bluey, and orangey. And our featured guest is our lovely chest. Nope, wrong chest. There we go. So let's say this chest is not relevant to Greeny and it's open on the server. The server is not going to replicate that information to Greeny because it determined that he doesn't need to know about this information at this point of the game. I can already hear some of you asking, yeah, but what if Greeny shows up to this chest later? What's he going to see? Is it going to be open or will it open all by itself as soon as he's relevant? Is he going to be able to open a slowdown, kiddo? We're going to learn all about that in the next video. It's important to know that being able to visually see the actor versus the actor being replicated to a client are two very different things. If you think back to our YouTube example, you can see a bunch of videos on your screen, but it's not until you actually click the video that it becomes relevant and you start fetching the data for that video. Likewise, a client can see a chest from across the map, but that doesn't mean that it's relevant to that client just because he can see it. Someone could open the chest right in front of you, but if the server determines that it's not relevant to you, nothing's going to happen. Guessing that it's relevant based on whether it's visible to a client or not will not always work, and I'll show you exactly what I mean later in the video. But for now, let's take a look at some of the settings that we have when it comes to network relevancy. So the first check that the engine does is the always relevant option. If this box is checked, it means that all connected clients will always know about the state of this actor at all times. So if you have a giant monster and you want all players to be able to see it and know its state regardless of where they are on the map, you'd tick the always relevant checkbox. That way when its state changes, the server will tell all connected players that it's moving, breathing out fire, eating a player, etc. Two questions that I like to ask myself when thinking about using this option is one, can this actor affect a player from anywhere on the map? And two, if a player doesn't know about the true state of this actor, does it really affect the gameplay? If the answer is no to both of those questions, then it doesn't need to always be relevant and there's probably a better relevancy setting that we can use. Now, regardless of whether this box is checked or not, there are a few scenarios where the actor is going to behave as if it's always relevant. The first one being if the client is the instigator of some action like causing some noise or damage, then it's always going to be relevant to that client because they caused it to happen, so obviously they know about it. The second scenario is ownership. If our chest actor, for example, is owned by this client, then it will always be relevant to that client. So any changes that happen to this actor on the server will be replicated to its owner. Ownership leads us into the second thing that the engine checks to determine relevancy, and that is the net use owner relevancy. The net use owner relevancy, as well as the third option, the relevant to owner only, both require an owner to be set for the actor in order for these settings to function properly. In an actor blueprint, you can explicitly set a player as the owner of an actor by passing in an actor reference. The actor reference needs to be something that identifies that player. When a client loads into the map, the game mode will assign that player a player controller and a pawn. So you can either use the pawn reference or the player controller reference to give the actor an owner since both references belong to an actual player. So if we set Bluey to be the owner of this actor, Bluey's always going to know about this chest actor's state, meaning the server is always going to update Bluey on what happens to this chest on the server side. So that's the default behavior of what happens when you give an actor an owner, but that has nothing to do with how the net use owner relevancy actually works. The net use owner relevancy needs an owner for it to actually work, but it actually does something else. For Bluey, this chest is now always going to be relevant because he's the owner, but for all the other players, the net use owner relevancy takes a look at its owner's relevancy settings. So Bluey happens to be a third person character, and the third person character class has its own relevancy settings. If the third person character actor is set to always be relevant, this chest is going to inherit that setting and set itself to always be relevant as well. The third option the engine uses is the only relevant to owner setting. Again, this expects the actor to have an owner for it to actually work properly. And this option simply ensures that the server will only replicate that actor to the owner and no other players. If this doesn't make any sense to you, don't worry. We're going to see all of these in action here in a second. 
This covers our first three options, but before we move on to the net call distance squared, I want to let you know about two other checks the engine does. These checks aren't necessarily settings, they're more of a behavior, and you can find this in the Unreal Engine documentation that I've linked in the description. We've covered the always relevant boolean as well as the net use owner relevancy and only relevant to owner. The fourth check is if the actor gets attached to a skeleton of another actor, then its relevancy is determined by the relevancy of its base. This is similar to the second setting, except instead of setting an owner explicitly, a player can pick up a weapon for example, and the weapon actor will inherit the relevancy settings of whatever actor it gets attached to. The fifth check is if the actor is hidden and it doesn't collide with anything, then it's not relevant. This is pretty straightforward, because why would the server replicate information about an actor that you can't see or touch as a player? Better question is, why is it even your game? Am I right? No, I'm not right. There's always a reason why stupid things like that happen. But anyway, this brings us to our last check. If the game network manager is set to use distance-based relevancy, the actor is relevant if it's closer than the net called distance. I don't know about you, but I'm a simple man with a simple brain, and this is way too much for my brain to digest. So here's the Brydox translation. Is it close enough? Okay, it's relevant. Oh, it's not close enough? Okay, I guess it's not relevant. On a serious note, the distance-based relevancy check simply checks to see if the player is within a certain area from the actor. The net call distance is squared, so in order to find the distance from the center of the actor, we need to get the square root of this number. The square root of 225 million is 15,000. This means that a player needs to be within 15,000 unreal units of the chest actor in order for the server to replicate this chest to the client. Alright, that's enough bra bra bra, let's get into the engine and start working with some of these settings. I've renamed my third person character to pp underscore player just because third person character was too hard to say and it's so much easier to say pp. Player. Let's give our PP the ability to interact. Right click on your blueprint graph and type in keyboard E. You can use any other key if you want, but I'm just going to use E for interaction. I'm going to right click again and let's create a custom event because we want the interaction to be handled by the server, not the client. And we should all know why by now, right? We'll call our new custom event SR underscore interact or whatever your naming convention is. When pressed, we'll call the SR interact RPC and we just got to make sure that it's running on the server by setting its replicates property to run on server. When the RPC gets called in the server side, we're going to do a line trace by channel. This part should be pretty straightforward for some of you folks, but if you don't quite understand the logic behind a line trace, make sure you watch episode two in the deep dive series that covers absolutely everything about line traces. I cover every single type of line trace. I literally cover every single pin coming out of this thing. I'll put a link underneath the like, the sub, and the notification bell, so make sure you guys go watch that video if you want to be happy. In the meantime, if you're following along, this is what it's going to look like, so I'll give you three seconds to copy it. Two, one, I'm just kidding. Obviously just pause the video and resume when you're done copying it. I've created a simple crosshair widget as well. If you don't know how to do that, don't worry. We cover everything you need to know about widgets in the UMG series. That's for future viewers. For you guys watching right now, obviously that series doesn't exist unless you're watching this in the future when it actually does exist. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now that we have that set up, let's get our chest in here. I've added links to the full project as well as the standalone chest with minimal settings. Different strokes for different folks, so if you learn better by dissecting complete projects, it'll be there for you. Or if you learn better by application, then you could download the standalone chest and play with the settings yourself. All I've done with the project is create child actors of the BP chest and slightly adjusted their functionality for each network relevancy scenario we're going to go through. Once you have the chest imported back in the palm blueprint, we can drag off of the hit actor in our line trace and cast it to BP chest. If our hit actor happens to be BP chest, we'll call the toggle open event. Let's open up BP chest and take a look at what's in there. Click the viewport and you'll see that there's three pieces to the chest, the top, the bottom, and a sphere. If we look at the construction script, you'll see that I've taken the square root of the net called distance squared, which I've set to 50,000 instead of the default of 225 million. It gives us a value of 223.606797775 units. The sphere we're using here has a dimension of one by one by one. So if we set its scale to this result, it means that our sphere now has a diameter of 223 unreal units. However, the net call distance is measured from the center of the actor to the edge, so this isn't quite what we want. We want to multiply this result by 2. Now, our sphere has a diameter of 446 point whatever, which means that the distance from the edge of the sphere to the center of the actor, which is also called the radius, is 223 unreal units. The sphere is now a visual representation of the net call distance. This is pretty cool and it becomes really handy when you're trying to figure out the right distance before something becomes relevant to a player, because you can easily go change the net call distance squared and the sphere will resize to help you easily visualize the relevancy area. In our event graph, we can see that toggle open event. This is the event that gets called by our line trace from our pawn to open and close the chest. It's a simple flip-flop that sets the top's relative rotation to 130 for the y-axis when opened, and it sets it back to zero when closed. We have a one second timeline that's using an ease in out curve to give it that nice smooth, I can't believe it ain't buttery animation, if you know what I'm saying. Sorry guys, I have no idea where that came from. I just really wanted to say buttery, buttery smooth. <laughs> All right, anyway, 
Um, notice how our open event is set to multicast, meaning when the server calls it, all relevant clients will run this logic on their version of the chest in their game instance, if and only if they are relevant to the chest when this multicast gets called. And yes, there is going to be a problem here, and we're going to see some of these issues shortly, but don't worry because we'll learn how to fix all of them in the next video. If you don't know what a multicast is, part one and two cover it briefly, but I highly recommend watching part four in this series to fully understand how it works alongside with rep notifies. For now, let's select the actor and you'll see that under the replication section by default, the net load on client box is checked. What this setting does is it forces any clients entering this level to load this actor during map load, making it visible to every client, but not necessarily relevant. You can also see that the actor's replicate property is unchecked. So by default, a client will load into the map and be able to see this chest, but if the chest is open on the server game instance, which is the only game instance that truly matters, the server won't tell any clients that the chest has been opened because the chest is not set to replicate its state to anyone. This is a prime example of what network relevancy is not. A client being able to see an actor does not make that actor relevant to the client. Since network relevancy is about replication of an actor to a client, it means that we have to make sure that the actor is set to replicates to ensure the server considers it for replication. If the setting is not turned on, then the actor is not going to be considered for replication, and if it's not considered for replication, then whatever relevancy settings you have set become Wait for it. Irrelevant. <laughs> he did it again. Yes. Since visually seeing it doesn't mean that it's being replicated, let's uncheck the net load on client. That way we'll only see the chest when it's relevant and being replicated. I've set the editor to use three players and I've updated the widget to show the server versus the clients just so it's easy to follow along. Now that we have that set up, let's look at the order of operations again. The first option was the always relevant setting. If we hit play, you'll see that everyone can see the chest and if it's open on the server side, everyone's going to know about it because we've set it to always be relevant no matter what. Remember that a line trace was set up to run on the server, so when we interact with this chest as the client, it's actually happening on the server. The always relevant option is pretty straightforward, right? So why not just use it for everything? If you're asking that question right now, you're probably not paying attention to anything that I'm saying, so let's just imagine this chest was 10,000 meters away behind a bunch of hills buried deep down inside a bunker. Hopefully you understand why setting a chest that far away from a player to always be relevant would be silly. If you don't know the answer, you're likely not paying attention or you've fallen asleep, but if you actually don't know the answer genuinely, please let me know in the comments and I will do better. Moving on to net use owner relevancy. Since we didn't load it during map load because we turned off the net load on client option, the clients can't see it. Remember options 2 and 3 are both owner options, meaning they need an actor to have an owner in order for these options to work properly. I've created an ownership button so when someone steps on it, it assigns that player as the owner of the chest. If we step on the button with client 1, you'll see the chest appears. Now anything that happens to the chest on the server side is going to be replicated to the owner, which happens to be client 1. So if the chest opens on the server, client 1 will see it open. However, notice how even though client 1 is the owner, client 2 can see it as well. That's because the net use owner relevancy is using its owner's relevancy settings. Its owner happens to be the pawn class, and the relevancy settings for this pawn class, since none of the other options are selected, is defaulting to the net call distance. Since the default value for that is 225 million, the relevancy area is enormous, so the chest becomes relevant to client 2 based on distance. Let's shrink the net call distance down to 225,000, and now if we hit play, we'll take client 1 and set him as the owner. You'll notice that client 2 can't see the chest anymore because he's no no longer within the net call distance or the relevancy area. Client 1 on the other hand can see it from anywhere because he owns it so he knows everything about it at all times. So let's move client 2 towards the chest and once we're there you'll notice that nothing happens. Well wait a minute, what's going on? This one is a tricky one. Ask yourself this, where are the relevancy settings for this chest coming from? We've set it up to use its owner. Okay, who's its owner? Well it's client 1 and he's a player pawn and homeboy happens to be over nowhere to be found. Yo, bruh, where'd you go? Oh, there you are, man. I swear somebody told me there was a chest back. Say what? Okay, what happened? Since we lowered the net call distance of the pawn class, as soon as the pawns were no longer near each other, they became irrelevant to one another. The server was no longer replicating the pawns to each other, so they got called out. When the server considers the chest for replication, it sees that it's set to use its owner's relevancy settings. So it looks at the pawn's relevancy settings and considers it for replication. Since client 1 was not relevant to client 2, then neither was the chest. Client 1 is basically saying, listen, Mr. 2, if you don't know me, then you don't know my chest. You got it, Holmes? Man, I need some voice acting skills because that was cringe. Anyway, if you still don't understand how that works, hit me up on Discord, or better yet, put your questions in the comments and you can be somebody else's problem. I'm kidding, I love you, just chill. Let's move on to relevant to owner only. This one behaves exactly the way it sounds. We'll set client one to be the owner again, and now the chest is gonna behave as if it's always relevant checkbox is checked, but it's only behaving that way for the owner. Obviously, the server sees all, knows all, smells all, but you get the point. No matter what client two does, they're not gonna be able to see it because the server's not gonna replicate it to them unless they take ownership. Snipe. 
There's an important lesson to learn here though. Even though client two owns the chest right now and client one can't even see it, it doesn't stop client one from interacting with it. This is because our line trace is happening on the server side. So the server sees this pawn close enough to the chest looking in the right direction and doing a line trace, which is a completely valid event. Key thing to understand is that just because you can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist or that you can't interact with it. The server is the truth and reality is not relative. So whatever these guys believe their reality to be is, wait for it, irrelevant. If client two is on top of the chest for client two, things make sense. He's standing on top of a chest. Client one, however, is tripping out because according to science, if someone isn't standing on anything, they should be falling. Client one is saying, you should be falling according to my reality. Meanwhile, the server and client two are like, client one, you just can't handle the truth, brother. As soon as client one learns about the chest, the law of gravity makes sense once again. However, once the server considers this chest for replication and does a cleanup, since the owner is now client one, client two's reality has changed. They've fallen through the chest because there's nothing there. Client 2 is now out of sync with the server. As soon as he jumps though, the server corrects his position and you can see him get boosted upwards. When you try to run through it, the struggle really becomes apparent. You can see how things can go haywire fairly quickly if you don't plan things out properly from the get-go. On to the final setting which we saw in action earlier with the pawn's relevancy settings. The net call distance squared basically checks to see if you're close enough to the actor. If so, it's relevant. Super simple, there's really nothing more to it other than a tiny little thing that might throw you off. Let me show you. We'll bring the server over here as a referee. Our player walks up to the chest and interacts. That's a technical foul, but we were clearly in bounds, so what happened? If we hover over the net called distance squared property, it tells us exactly what it's looking for. Blah blah blah, client's viewpoint blah blah blah. Well, what's the viewpoint? I'll give you a hint. It's big, it's blue, and it rhymes with camera. If you guessed arrow component, no. You want to talk about a relative reality? Well, there's something that's completely relative for you. Colors. So let's see what happens when we stand outside the relevancy area and position our camera on the inside. We'll get client 2 to open the chest and the server can still referee, since I can't do it from this angle, and you'll see that it replicates perfectly. Pretty interesting, isn't it? The distance relevancy check is using the viewport to determine how close you are to the object. It makes sense if you think about it, since the camera is our eyes and our eyes determine what we see, if our eyes aren't close enough to see it, the engine is saying, hey, it's not relevant for you. I just wanted to show you guys that in case you have a third person character and you're testing out the net call distance settings and things aren't working the way you expect them to. Just remember that it's checking the distance from the actor to the player's current active camera. I also want to mention that it takes a few seconds for things to get called out or become non-relevant after you leave the relevancy area and that's just because it takes a couple seconds for the server to actually clean things up. One last thing just as a heads up, the documents show the order of operations, meaning the steps the server goes through when it considers an actor for replication. There's a difference between the order of operations versus the weight of each setting. For example, the always relevant checkbox is the first check the server does, however if you also check the only relevant to owner, things are going to break. So make sure when you're playing with the replication settings, you're using the proper non-contradicting settings. Don't just check every single option and expect things to magically work, because it won't. And even when you do set things up the right way, things don't work the way you expect them to anyway. So we honestly just might as well give up on multiplayer and all go make a single player Minesweeper. I'm kidding you guys, you've got this, so don't you ever give up, okay? I'll be here to help you, one video per decade at a time. That being said, this, my friends, concludes our network relevancy lesson, but it does leave us with some very important yet unanswered questions from earlier. What happens when an irrelevant actor changes state and becomes relevant to a player afterwards? What do they see? Thank you, Daryl. That was an excellent question. We can see firsthand that this poses a serious problem since the game is out of sync for one of the players. We need a way to sync things up throughout the entire match for all players, especially if everyone is moving around and hundreds if not thousands of actors are being interacted with and becoming relevant to some players and irrelevant to others during the game. So how do we make sure everyone sees one single truth at any point in the game? We break thumbs, smash subs, and ding dong our way to the next video. For real though, I'm serious, especially about that sub ding dong combo so you don't miss part four where we talk about multicast events and rep notifies, the bread and butter of multiplayer games. I'll see you guys in the next video coming out 2030. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but I might not be. Peace.